Well, once again, good morning. I greet you all in the sweet name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, my name is Peter Kistandu of Souls Outreach, Newlands West. Okay, it's the 31st of May. We are on the last day of level four lockdown. Lockdown will be easing. Tomorrow we will be moving to level three. And in level three, government has given us permission to open the doors of uh, religious organizations for worship. So churches will be open, strictly adhering to the rules as well. So I just want to say something very, very important. Don't compromise. Make sure you sanitize. Make sure you obey the rules. This, after all, this is for your very own benefit and the benefit of your family. Okay. So people asked us, Pastor Peter, are you going to post something on the net for us to hear? So I feel it's my duty to post something so that you can hear. There are many people preaching on the internet. There are many good preachers, sound preachers. But the people say they like to hear my message, especially my people. So that is why I'm bringing this message and I pray that God will richly bless you. Okay, I want to go into the word of God. When you look at the life of Jesus, Jesus performed many miracles. Okay, The first miracle was he turned water into wine. He healed the sick, he raised the dead, he opened blind eyes, he calmed the storm, he walked on water, deaf and dumb people were restored. When the people were hungry, he multiplied the fish and the loaves, he cleansed the lepers. There are so many miracles that he did, he rose Lazarus from the dead. Now precious friends, when you look at the miracles of Jesus, one man made a very powerful statement and he said, God is a God of plan. God is a God of design, God is a God of purpose, and God is a God of objectivity. In other words, when God allows anything to happen, He does not just allow it to happen for nothing. There's a plan, there's a purpose, there's a design, there's an objective. When you look at the life of Joseph, Joseph didn't suffer for nothing. He suffered, but in the end, he saved a nation. David didn't suffer for nothing. David was suffering. Somebody wrote the book and he said he was training for reigning. He became one of the greatest things. So taking into note that God is a God of plan, he's a God of purpose, he is a God of design, he's a God of objectivity. One of the miracles that Jesus performed really bothered me. And I got to thinking and I started researching and finding out why would Jesus do something like this? So follow me in the scriptures right now, even as I take you to Mark chapter 11 and verses 12. The Bible says the next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves. What was Jesus looking for? Jesus was looking for fruit. Did he find any fruit? No. He found nothing but leaves. The Bible says, Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And the disciples heard him say it. Now, when you follow the scripture in verses 20, it says when the disciples came back, they noticed that the fig tree withered and he died. And Jesus told them, if you have faith as a grain of the mustard seed, you can do great things. But my question is, why curse a tree? Why dry up a tree? What is the meaning? Is there anything that I can glean from that as a child of God as well? And you'll find out, you know, when Paul, when Paul was talking to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2, 4, he said that we must be instant in season and out of season. We must be prepared in season and out of season. In other words, we as children of the Most High God, we must bear fruit at all times. We must live fruitful lives. Even John the Baptist said we must produce fruit in keeping with repentance. In the book of Galatians says, we must have the fruit of the Spirit now flowing in our lives. And the greatest fruit of the Spirit is love. Love, the Bible also says charity. Love, okay. So you'll find out Jesus cursed the fig tree because it had no fruit. And what is the message to every one of us? 
it's not, not it doesn't mean that we must only look good we must have green leaves we must have all the bells and whistles but we must live fruitful lives we must be able to bear fruit and a tree according to the bible is known by its fruit okay now after doing that he goes on a bit further and the bible says in verses 15 on reaching jerusalem jesus entered the temple area jesus entered the temple area why was the temple built what was the purpose for the temple being built the people to come together to corporately worship god and you know jerusalem was the capital city of worship and people from all over the known civilized world then came to Jerusalem to worship God. Listen to what happens. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. Remember, he goes to the temple area and what are they doing? They're buying and selling. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves now i don't know if you've been to some marketplaces where people are selling stuff uh, now remember they're doing this inside the, they're doing this in the church i think it is in the gentile area they're selling they're buying they're exchanging money because if you want to give to the temple you must give the temple coins and people were doing business in church people were doing business they were buying they were selling doves and listen, he overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. Now remember, precious friends, Jesus is looking for true worshippers. And this is a house of worship. But look what happened slowly, gradually. They made it very convenient. They said, you need to give a sacrifice, we'll sell you the sacrifice. You need to give an offering, we'll do the money changing for you. And we become the middleman, we become businessmen in the house of God. And we turn the house of God into the house of merchandise. So remember, Jesus cursed the fig tree because it looked very promising, but produced no fruit and you'll find out he goes into the house of God he overturns everything he chases everybody out he drives out the animals and then he teaches them and he said my house will be called a house of prayer for the nations precious friends during this season the nations of the world are facing a huge pandemic people are dying daily they're running short of medical supplies and you'll find out Jesus said my house will be called a house of prayer for the nations so remember the doors are going to be open again people are going to gather together for public worship again remember Jesus said my house will be called a house of prayer for the nations don't make it a house of merchandise don't make it a den of thieves okay don't make it a den of robbers don't make it a house of business let it be a house of worship let it be a house of prayer you know in the book of exodus chapter 32 remember god is a god of plan he's a god of purpose he's a god of design he's a god of objectivity when god told moses let my people go he said let my people go so that they may worship me his purpose was worship let them go so that they may worship me now not long after they came out of egyptian bondage moses goes to the mountain to bring the ten commandments and on his return this is what he hears the bible says in exodus chapter 32 and verses 17 when joshua heard the noise of the people shouting he said to moses this is the sound of war in the camp this is the sound of war I want you to know something it was nothing near warfare Moses replied it is not the sound of victory it is not the sound of defeat it is the sound of singing that I hear wow 
it is not the sound of victory it is not not the sound of defeat it is the sound of singing that i hear you know what that singing was meaningless god couldn't inhabit that kind of singing that was more entertainment people were having a party people were just gone wild and yet he said my house will be called a house of prayer where true worshipers will come to the house of god and pray so precious friends i want to encourage you right now even as we drop from lockdown 4 to lockdown 3 and even as the house of god is now being open we need to find out are we bound by traditionalism i want to ask some people as well are you bound by judaism remember when we go through the new testament scriptures there is a pattern for worship and jesus christ is looking for true worshipers remember we too can be caught in a bondage if we don't arise early to go to the house of the lord if we go to the house of the lord unprepared okay and thereafter we turn the house of god into a house of merchandise a den of robbers and a marketplace so precious friends when this lockdown eases and we are required we are allowed to go back to the house of god to worship let's go with purity let's go with honesty let's find out god is this necessary is that necessary do you want this do you want that and you'll find out sometimes even if we bound by tradition we got to learn to adjust to the word of god align ourselves to the word of god and do what god wants us to do somebody told me a simple story once you know what they said there was a, a lady boiling mealies and she broke all the mealies and put it into the pot to bang to boil it the daughter asked ma why are you breaking the mealies and putting in the pot she said go and ask your granny when she went and asked granny granny said my mother used to do that go and ask your great granny so she went up to the great granny and asked granny why are you breaking mealies she said you know what ma when we were young we were very very poor we didn't have big pots we had small pots a whole mealy will not fit into a pot so we used to break it and put it inside you'll find out that tradition got passed down through the lineage and now even though we have big pots we still have a mindset that is in bondage to small pots and because we in bondage we doing things that are not in keeping with what we now have available jesus came to set us free from bondage jesus came to set us free from all types of bondage he wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth and i want to say to you precious friends when you go to the house of god it's not your high flying fashion it's not your eloquent speeches it's not your music god is looking for people who will worship him in spirit and in truth and that is why jesus said my house will be called a house of prayer for the nations the nations are suffering right now let's go back with a god given idea saying we will turn the house of god into a house of prayer for the nations and who knows god may give us a speedy answer for this covid-19 disease he said ask and you shall receive seek and you shall find knock and the door will be opened when we come together to corporately worship god and we cry out to the lord he said if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves turn from the wicked ways seek my face then i will hear from heaven i will forgive their sin and i will heal their land once again to all of y'all who are doing acts of mercy for your giving your love your support for feeding the poor and the needy for taking care of the underprivileged we salute you god bless you you doing a good job we see you and we pray that you will continue doing this may god provide for you supernaturally and help you remember the words of jesus my house shall be called a house of prayer
for the nations. Let's not make it anything else, but let's keep it to the house of prayer that Jesus wants. Well, that's, let's bow our heads for a short time of prayer. Our most gracious God and eternal Father, we humbly bow before you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, even as we pray right now, our heart goes out for those people who are suffering in hospital. Our heart goes out for those people who are infected with the COVID-19 virus. We humbly ask you, O oh God, that you would make a way. We humbly ask you, O oh God, that you will give us an answer. Lord, we look to you, our medical staff, our scientists. I pray, God, that you will empower them. I pray, God, that you will give us an answer during the season. So even as we go back to that building, O oh Lord, and even as we go, help us that we will do it right. Help us that we will worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, if there's anything that is like merchandise, help us to get rid of it and worship you for you inhabit the praises of your people. We don't want you to stand outside and knock. We want you to come in and bless us. And Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, no matter what season it is, no matter whether we're in public or whether we're in private, help us that the fruit of the Spirit will be evident in our lives. Help us, O oh Lord, that we will produce fruit in keeping with repentance and we will have the nine gifts of the Spirit, not only the gifts of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit flowing in our lives. And we ask this in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with much thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen and amen. Once again, precious friends, God bless you to Souls Outreach, Newlands West. We are carefully assessing the situation. We will keep you informed and we'll let you know when we're going to open and when we get everything in order, according to government regulations, we will let you know thereafter we will open with government's permission abiding strictly by the rules. So I want to leave you with one message. Remember, social distancing, wear your mask, don't compromise, sanitize. With that, may God richly bless you. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful week.